Yo, what is going on, you guys? Bash and Wise here, and today, guys, I'm gonna be coming at you with my updated tier list for May, end of May, starting in the beginning of June, guys, 2024. Now, the video quality is gonna be a little different for this one, as uh, so with my editing. I am in, not in my home office, so I'm gonna kind of do this impromptu, but I want to make sure I get this out to you guys. There's been a lot of updates, there's been a lot of changes in the meta, there's been a lot of uh, new decks introduced, and new strategies as well, guys, and new tournament results that we have to go ahead and base off of, guys. So, we are gonna go ahead and take a look at that today. Today, guys, we are going off the brand new end of May 2024 meta tier list. Now, I'm not here to bring anyone down. I'm not here to bring any of your decks down. If there's a deck that you feel is disrespected, let me know in the comment section down below. And if there's a deck list that works for you, let's go ahead and talk about it. But we are here, guys, to go ahead and show you what the meta looks like currently and what it will look like because we're not getting on the set, guys, until I believe it's going to be July 19th. So we got two months, essentially, of this current format going forward. I don't see a, a ban list coming in anytime soon, of course. It's way, way too early to go ahead and predict that. We just had one, like, what, a month ago. So it's not anything too crazy like that, guys. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So... First things first, guys, go ahead and get the easy ones out the way. Let's go ahead. Where is the Snake Eye? Snake Eye, obviously, is still the best deck. So, as you can see on the tier list, I went ahead and did a little bit differently this time. Instead of doing like tier 1, tier 2, tier 0, whatever it might be, I went meta defining, competitive, good, but not great. Uh, needs a very strong pile of user decks that might be able to compete in the event that the pilot is a uh, one trick pony type pilot or just really knows the deck inside and out and understands matchups and how to side deck which is going to be a few of these decks on here as well and stop it guys is going to be the pretty much just let's just stop playing but easily one of the best decks if not the best deck of the current format is still going to be snake eye guys tournament results still show it Although it has gone down in popularity as far as the uh, representation in Top Cut, I really don't think that's a knock on the deck itself. I think if people really wanted to go ahead and play the best deck, they would play the best deck, which is Snake Eye, of course. Um, so I'm, it, going into like Nat season, you'll probably see a lot more of it. But realistically, guys, with the with everyone who is going to be going to Nats pretty much already having their invite, I think that it's a fact it's a factor of popularity where it's a lot of people just don't are are bored of this deck it it's, tends to be pretty linear realistically so it's something that I definitely, I definitely understand as far as it goes it has some cool plays don't get me wrong it was nice it was fun when it was brand new but overall it, it starts to get a little bit stale people want to play new things they want to try out tempai which is going to be the next deck we're going to be talking about but i think overall it's lack of win percentage has pretty much just gone down and just overall lack of popularity is not that fun a deck anymore and people just want something new so it, however, in that format, this deck is going to be ridiculous, unless we get a ban list. And then we have Tenpai Dragon, of course, being the second most meta-defining deck of the current format, guys. I think that Tenpai Dragon is absolutely ridiculously good. There's the fact that it can pretty much just shut down an entire uh, interruptions. Uh, pretty much Miscellaneous Source, which Miscellaneous Source got hit on the ban list so many times already. It's ridiculous that they would give us an entire field spell, searchable through terraforming, searchable through set rotation, uh, metaverse, whatever it might be. Metaverse is not really going to be the best way to search it out because you're going to be going second. This is a blind going second. That's absolutely just crazy what it can do. Put up over 30,000 points of damage. I mean, it, it's it's something that I definitely undervalued in my previous uh, in my previous list. I believe I put that tier 1.5 or tier 2, uh, just because I thought if people were to prepare for it. But honestly, I think a lot of the duelists who play Tempai and who pilot the deck have actually come up with some phenomenal ways to go ahead and play around a little account a lot of counters for this strategy, uh, which I think is fantastic. The mirror matches pretty much who's getting who's gonna get to go second. Uh, but even then, I mean, Seals Pass is really is well, it is a meme. It is still a really great play, which sets you a follow up and an unbreakable board as far as like not being able to be destroyed by battle. So you're, you're making your opponent have to out everything by popping in the battle phase. So that is a lot of things you're gonna be doing against your opponent, guys. Uh, just to go ahead and out this this deck is really really good, and I definitely definitely undervalued it for sure. Another thing we're gonna be talking about, guys. Uh, so I want to go ahead and address this real quick. That um, okay, this is gonna be weird. Uh, but I want to go ahead and put heroes in needs a very strong pilot. I think that obviously uh, heroes has so much support, guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. But the fact that it can actually stop you from activating spells is really, really good. On top of having additional forms of interruption, is really good, guys. Now, in order to 
play heroes, you need to be a really, really good hero player. There's very, very few people I know can actually pilot this deck. They pilot the deck extremely well. Uh, and honestly, I think it goes to show that this deck is something that you're not going to expect seeing in the high tables per se as often. But if you see one person that's there within the top few tables, you know that they understand the insides and outsides of the deck, you know that deck like the back of their hand, and it's very, very unlikely they're going to be misplaying guys. So I think Heroes has a very, very strong chance to do well at the regional level, national level. I don't think so, but uh, realistically, I think it's a really, really good deck. Uh, Purelli is definitely a competitive deck. I would not say it's matter defining right now. Was, uh, because I believe Sleeping Memory and Delicious Memory are both at 2 right now. Uh, if either of those were at 3, this deck would definitely be meta-defining. Um, but because of that, I still I still believe it is still competitive just because you have to have some type of mix of the two. Uh, also, a lot of the cards in the current format just kind of outing this deck as well. Like D Barriers, huge, a lot of people's side decks, and some main decks as well. Uh, especially if you're on Marincess. I heard about you at the San Antonio Regional and try to hide from me. Um, but yeah, so I think Purely has a, a amazing, amazing ability to go ahead and make. Uh, obviously the tower is just it's a great grind ability. The fact that you get so much advantage out of your monster being outed as well. I mean Purely has just been one of the best decks uh, for a while, but I think just because we got a little bit of a boost through the ban list, I think Purely is definitely going to be one of the top, top competitive decks of the current format. Along with Castiera. Castiera is still back at being one of the most competitive decks of the format. D Barrier wins a lot of games, a lot of games, guys, and the reason why Cashier Engine ha itself has been used in Tempi to take a few top cuts here and there as well, so that's something that's definitely worth considering because, F as we all know, Cashier is a phenomenal engine, but even better as a deck as a whole, so just really, really good. The overall playability ability has to be very, very uh, consistent. And of course, with the most recent uh, rarity collection, making the field spell a lot more accessible for a bunch of us. Realistically, I believe the only card that is expensive is going to be Cashier Theosis. I believe it's like 20 bucks a pop, uh, and maybe Rise Heart, but that's pretty much it. And then we got the Megatons coming out later on the year, but that's later on the year, guys. I think the deck is very accessible, the deck is very, very good. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that one. Uh, I do want to go ahead and put um, Chimera at good, not great. Um, I've been a bit advocate for the Ch Chimera strategy for a while now. I believe the Illusion cards, the new ones that came out, Diabellos, is phenomenal at stopping the Runic Stunt engine, is phenomenal at stopping a lot of the Biden Dragon plays. Um, not by the dragon, uh, what's it called? The uh, uh, Sangen Kaiman from the Tempais uh, is great at stopping the uh, the, oh, the Wanted from the uh, original uh, the Snake Eye deck. So I think it has a lot of good things going for it. Um, the one thing I will say is that it's an issue of consistency, whether you want to go ahead and play with Branded or play with Illusion. It feels like it's just missing that left, next level of uh, strength in order to be able to just be really really good um, which we may be getting some more additional support down the line I'm not entirely sure about that and this is confirm I don't have some entire knowledge but for right now I think good not great is fair to say I don't think it's got any many type of like tops or anything so we got we got that to look forward to of course and then we have branded branded I am very uh, disappointed in how um, and how Brandon's performing right now. I really thought I would be able to easily put this as a top tier deck. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't think it is. Uh, Branded is still a ridiculously good deck, and you can never, of course, count out Branded. It just one Branded Fusion goes off, and you can completely just wipe your entire board and go crazy. So it's something that you definitely want to definitely you know, respect. Uh, Branded, of course, the Barrier Ash being still in the format is something that you're just not actually going to have to go ahead and find a way to go ahead and play around it. But the good thing is that you still have Branded Red, things to go ahead and fuse uh, or sync or whatever during your opponent's turn. So I think Brand is still really, really good, really, really competitive, can destroy whatever board. And the fact that it doesn't need to play any hand traps realistically in the deck is just goes to show how strong the overall engine is as a whole, and I think it's absolutely fantastic, honestly. Um, Runic Stun is still going to be a good, not great, I would say. Um, the thing with Runic Stun is that it thrives off of specifically 
formats where synchro monsters are not used and the fact that Tenpai Dragon only synchro summons uh, because of the fact that it has that you can play synchro zone. Now I'm sure rooting players will find other ways but with every single floodgate getting hit essentially except for skill drain it's going to be really really tough for uh, rooting some players to be able to find anything to go ahead and play in order to substitute for it. Now a good rooting stun player can still go ahead and do very very well with this deck. I mean realistically just making sure you're maximizing your resources and, and you know, things like that, but uh, I think Rune is done for what it, it is what it is. It's a good deck. I don't think it's a great deck. I think it was a little, little bit better previous format, pre Tempi, but that's just my personal opinion on that, guys. So let's keep the ball rolling on it. We have uh, Fire Kings. Uh, I'm surprised that it's a good, not great deck. I haven't seen Fire King Snake Hive perform nearly as much as I would have thought. I feel like I've seen the other decks, Pirelli, Cash here, and Brandon perform just a little bit better, um, but I, so I'm, I'm a little frazzled by that one as to what's going on with the with Fire King engine, but honestly, I still think the Fire King engine is ridiculously good. I think that overall, even pure Fire King, when that was a, when that was a deck pre-Snake Eye, was just a lot of fun to play. It's a, it's a great deck. It's a lot of fun to play. It's really, really good. Uh, you know what? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave it at good, not great. <laughs> it's still a really, really good deck, guys. The recursion it has, popping cards constantly. It just the It's just such a good, grindy deck uh, that can just OTK out of nowhere as well. So I, th I think it's obviously going to be towards the top of a good, not great uh, list, but that's just my first opinion. Uh, Fluanderies, um, I haven't really seen do nearly as well. I'm going to go ahead and put in not good, not great. I mean, realistically, guys, yeah, flu is unfortunately still a good strategy. Like, there's, there's no real ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no way to get around it. The only issue it has is it's, it's just bricking. <laughs> Which, if you're going to be going to a, a competitive event, whether it's high tier or whatever it might be, if you want to be successful playing Yu-Gi-Oh! at more than four rounds, if you're going to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds at a time, you're going to need to prioritize consistency. And if the deck is not consistent, then it's not worth playing right now, guys. So it, while it is a really, really great strategy if you're able to go ahead and normal summon Rubina and have it not get Baylord, I just really think that with uh, with that being said, it's going to fall under this category, guys. But let's go ahead and keep the train going. Uh, Rescue Ace is still going to be a still going to be a. I'm stuck between putting it at good, not great, and takes a very good, you know, a very strong pilot. But even though they're very strong pilot for Rescue Ace, I mean, you'd rather just go ahead and play the, uh, the Snake Eyes. It's just so much better uh, to go ahead and play. Uh, it's a lot stronger of a deck, so I'm going to go ahead and put it right there. Uh, let's go ahead and keep it going though. So we got uh, Voiceless. I'm not going to forget Voiceless this time. If you guys remember from my last tier list, I completely omitted uh, Voiceless. So you guys wrote to me in the comments. I appreciate you guys pointing out uh, my, my mishap there. If you will. Voiceless is just a ridiculous deck. And the fact that you can mix it with Melodious, which is another deck we're going to get to in just a little bit. Melodious is one of the strongest engines in Yu-Gi-Oh! at the moment. Do not be fooled by Melodius's cute whatever artwork, whatever it might be. Melodius is something that you have to go ahead and respect. You have to understand the line. If you guys don't know how the line works with Melodius, let me know in the comments to go ahead and do a quick tutorial for you guys here on the channel. Um, but yeah, I think just Melodius is absolutely crazy, especially in Voiceless Voice. Uh, Melodius is good in a, a whole bunch of other decks, but uh, Voiceless Voice is just really, really strong. Being able to have an Omni Negate when realistically Omni Negates are non-existent anymore, uh, which is a big advocate is why I believe Brandon Chimera was going to be a little bit better because you can just make Dragoon, but it's going to be not nearly as consistent as you would with Skull Guardian uh, with the Voice of the Voice. Being the only deck that makes a consistently strong 4100 attack Omni the Gate guy, uh, which is untargetable, is just really, really ridiculous. So I definitely believe these are the. I'm not going to put any more decks in meta defining. These are the three top meta defining decks of the current format guys uh, if you guys disagree let me know in the comments but i think there's no there's no question on that one so uh, let's go ahead and keep it going uh, melodious i want to go ahead and put it at actually a competitive deck um i just it seems crazy to, for me to say i think melodious is absolutely ridiculous this fact that it can do that it can lock you really consistently um, it has a surprising amount of grind game and I actually got top 8 at San Antonio region I was at with uh, uh, my boy Brayden. If you watch this, Brayden, appreciate you, bro. 
Uh, but I mean, it, the things I was sitting next to him in one of the rounds, and he was just going off with the loaded. I was like, "What does this deck even do?" <laughs> um, but it's really, really good. Just being able to go ahead and uh, fusion something from your pendulum zone, and then you do your lock, and you have the fusion that bounces start it bounces everything back to the hand. It's just crazy. Just overall, what it can do. Uh, I can end you on an Appaloosa plus the bounce. It can end you on. You can put this in Snake Eye and use it uh, to go ahead and go into an Infernal Flame Banshee. With two low cores, just the, the 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 options are are limitless essentially with melodies. That's what I'm trying to say, guys. Um, let's go ahead and put Orcus and stop it. And uh, not even with a very good pilot, you're not gonna. I just don't see it. <laughs> Uh, Salamangrate, I think, needs a very, very strong pilot. I feel like Salamangrate is one of those decks that looks extremely, extremely linear, but if it, you have someone who understands how to play Salamangrate really well, especially with the new cards that are coming out for this, uh, Salamangrate, uh, the little golem guy, I forget his name, the level 2, and we're going to be getting another uh, Cybers uh, Salamangrate card, uh, I believe, sometime soon, uh, if it hasn't already come out, but the so Salamangrate is just a really, really good deck, guys. Uh, the fact that it can end on a multi-pop plus Omni Negate as well. It's really, really consistent. All it really needs is just like one, two cars. As long as you can make a rank three, you're good. And all that the all the decks does pretty much make the rank make the one rank three go into Gazelle or whatever you may need and just go keep popping off from there. Uh, which I've actually seen some additional lines that actually goes into like Synchro Summoning. We still have the Raging Phoenix, which is a ridiculously good card. We still have Promethean Princess. So I think Salamangate with a really, really good uh, pilot can take this deck all the way to the top, realistically. Uh, Centurion, I'm going to go ahead and put it at a... Towards the top of good, not great. Um, no, you know what? Okay, fine. You know what? These are not going to be in any order specifically, except for the Fire King. <laughs> for good, not great. Centurion still a really, really cool deck. I, d I have trouble respecting it right now. It really depends on what you mix it with. If you mix it with Chorus, then it can be as elevated just a little bit more. Uh, just because I think the synergy with the deck is absolutely ridiculous. Just being able to have constantly level eights on the board you can use to go ahead as synchro fodder is really good. Um, I think good, not great, is really where it belongs. And same thing with Horus. Uh, Horus specifically with uh, Light Sworn Bestial is something I think is really, really crazy. Horus itself as a it's not really a deck, it's more of an engine, so I, I don't think it's fair to put this here. I'm going to go ahead and put it with the Light Sworn, because um, I think that's where it's going to be best. At, at a Horus Tier Limit, uh, or Horus Light Sworn, Horus uh, Chaos uh, Light Sworn, that's the deck it was. Uh, it's actually a surprisingly good deck, and takes, of course, a really, really good pilot. It's going to take a little bit of RNG as well with your Light Sworn mills, uh, or your Horus mills with Zombie Vampire, but... I think that honestly this deck can be really really good. I went up against it at the regional and just ripping cards out of my hand for like crazy. Two Omega set up the disc pattern is absolutely nuts what the overall deck can do. Uh, so yeah, it's going to need a very very strong pilot but I think this deck can be really really sneaky. Uh, Manadium, it, I just don't see it doing much at all. I mean this this feels like your entire board is going to get destroyed, absolutely shattered by Nibiru or Droll. And you're just not going to be left with absolutely anything in any deck after that going over to OTK, which is because of the lack of like follow-up you're going to be able to have after that. So it's going to be very, very tough. Plus, obviously, Bist Dealers are still in the format. Let's go ahead and get the Vsauce out of there or whatever you do. Um, yes, yeah, go ahead and put that on there. You Bell, let's go back to the top of the list. You Bell is definitely a competitive Yu Yu deck. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, put it a little bit higher. Do I put it? I'm going to go ahead and put it slightly higher, okay? You Bell is a ridiculous. It's a deck that I honestly completely did not see coming at all whatsoever. I thought it was going to be a deck. Oh, it's super polished your board away. No. The deck is really, really good. I mean, it, it, you, it, may, it forces you to attack into it. You're going to be taking all that damage. Um, it's, it's really, really pesky little effects that are going to be getting to you guys. And honestly, I think You Bell is absolutely, especially now that. People are starting to understand the strategy behind you, Bell, and mixing it with Unchained, 
playing it with the uh, with the Dark Beckoning Beast package. I think Yubel is absolutely ridiculous. New support cards. Sam Star is ridiculous. Special summon out the Spirit of Yubel from the deck or whatever it might be. Uh, and then Nightmare Pain, Nightmare Throne are stupid. Uh, just really, really great cards. And then of course you have your uh, your trap card. I forget the name of the trap card, but uh, just being able to just quick super call your entire board is just ridiculous, guys. I think Yubel is definitely one of the best decks of the format and if you go up you see i know for a fact anyone sits across from you bell they are shitting breaks bro <laughs> absolutely shitting breaks there's no way uh, the deck is way too good uh sword soul um i'm gonna put it takes a very good pilot again losing out on uh on what's it called the baron and was tough don't get me wrong it's very very tough as i think sword soul has a lot of consistency which is fantastic a lot of consistency and it has a a lot of really really good synchro still to choose from um and you can still end on some decent boards it does make make you end on more uh either 10 year sword soul lines as well which is still really good don't get me wrong but i think it still needs a very very good pilot um, Ragnarika, <laughs> um, it, it's it's either here or here. Realistically, with Ragnarika, it's a deck that I had a lot of really good hope for. I had a, I had thought this deck was going to be absolutely great. Uh, I thought it was going to be fantastic. Mixed it with uh, I forgot what I mixed it with. I thought it was going to be really really good deck, guys. Uh, Ogdoatic. Um, I think the best version of this deck was uh, with this and the Rika Sanapo on stuff funny enough so i think it just needs a very 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 strong pilot in order to get this deck to the top but it's very very close i'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at stop it uh <laughs> really see you guys i mean ragnarika is was such a letdown I, th I thought this deck was gonna be really, really good and unfortunately i was wrong it is what it is uh so let's go ahead and keep the keep the train moving guys uh labyrinth is still a competitive deck i would say uh, not nearly as strong as I thought it would be because literally the deck has been completely untouched. Three big welcome, three welcome labyrinth. Uh, the deck overall is really good. Um, I just think that because it can't really interact with uh, Tempai Dragons, it can't really do anything against Voiceless Voice Line, where I would put it at the lower ends of competitive, but it can definitely still provide a bit of a menacing uh, figure, if you will, against the rest of the decks. Uh, a funny one I did want to go ahead and include on here, uh, shout out to homie, I believe his name is Gabriel from the San Antonio Regionals playing uh, Stardust Dragon and actually surprised the crap out of me. <laughs> um, and, and we had we had a great, great duel, great back and forth uh, if you're watching, a uh, great duel bro. Um, but honestly he made me really believe that Stardust is a viable deck with a very very strong pilot in the event that comes up guys honestly i think it's really really cool just to be able to see stardust on here uh, the, granted i mean if you have a whole bunch of hand traps which pretty much the whole format is going to be very tough but i just think it's a lot of fun and, then, and they have a, a synchro monster especially some of this is five cards from the deck for no reason it's ridiculous is overall what it what this guy was doing with the deck so i think it takes extremely wrong extremely extremely strong pilot now there may be a little bit of bias there but it is what it is we'll talk about it in the comments uh sky striker we can go ahead and stop that i don't really need to get into it uh, if you're going to want to play a, a going second deck just play tempai dragon there's no reason to play sky striker right now uh, or you can play sky striker in your tempai dragon that's definitely a valid strategy um, so then we have uh, Tier Element guys. Tier Element I think is a good not great deck. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot more accessible now. Oh, not a lot more, but a little more accessible now. Again, uh, the uh, the Pressure Planet, whatever it is getting, not Pressure Planet, it's um, uh, whatever the Tier Element uh, feels, but it's got reprinted, so that's nice with the deck. Uh, so it's going to be seeing potentially a little bit more uh, viability. Uh, Malicious is of course at 3, so I still think it's a good deck. I wouldn't put it at a great deck. Uh, I wouldn't put it at competitive. Um, and if you have a strong pilot, it's just so luck dependent. Uh, and with everything at once, surprisingly, it's still a, you know, fair, more than decent deck, I would say. Uh, Marincess takes a very, very strong pilot to go ahead and get this out of the way. Uh, just on understanding interactions, understanding where your choke points are with Marincess is extremely important. Uh, it's a deck that can run a 
ton of hand traps as well uh, and still be extremely consistent which I think is fantastic it's the same thing as I believe about snake eye of course I'm not comparing the two at in strength level I'm only comparing the two is that they're both very, very consistent decks I would say uh, that can play a high number of hand traps or non-engine and still be really really good uh, so I want to go ahead and leave it at needs a very strong pilot and we'll go ahead and just we can stop playing Vanquish Soul <laughs> if you're going to be playing a shifter deck Go ahead and play Tenpai, Cash Tira, um, or, or Flute, uh, realistically, because Van Vanquish Soul is just not doing anything in this current format, guys. Um, so, again, I don't want to end it on, on, the, on the low note, guys, but that is going to be it for my meta tier list for the end of May, going on to June 2024. Ban list, not ban list, meta tier list, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. This has been really fun. Again, sorry for the uh, weird quality going on, but we're trying our best out here. So if you guys have any decks that I missed, I hope I didn't miss any crazy ones. I made I'm making sure to not miss any of the big ones. We got voices voice in there, guys. One of the top decks of the format. So again, let me know if you guys what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you guys disagree, again, let me know in the comments. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's discuss, let's come together, and I'll see y'all in the next one.